Right, folks, we are now with another one of the German greats. We are on to the horse stand here at uh, Agritechnica 2025. They've got a, a few updates, a few new products, and a bit of a surprise as well. Uh, as ever, thank you to all of our sponsors for yeah making the coverage of Agritechnica 2025 happen to uh, to Cummins, to Avon Tuning HD, to s and Plant Services, and to JCB Insurance. But now we turn our attentions to Horse, and we are joined by the UK General Manager, Mr. Stephen Bircham. Stephen, yeah. first of all, thank you very much for sparing a few minutes. No, no problem, James. To talk through the new updates and whatnot. Yep. Pronto. Uh, yeah. Bread and butter product for you guys. Yes. Yeah, we've had the uh, Pronto now for many years, and we can't really find any reason to make any real changes. Yeah, but it works. It works. Yeah. Um, but we've got to keep updating it and things like that. So this is the new uh, Pronto 9 we've just launched. So it's just a revamp, bigger hopper. Yeah. So we're now up to 6,000 litres and um, still the same cultivation discs. Most people on this size of drill have a front packer. Yeah cultivation and then you can either have a levelling board which is on the other side or the PPF. Right. Uh, most common for us would be what we call GNF, so grain and fertiliser. So we mix the <coughs> grain and fertiliser in the air right. when it goes down to the coulters. Yeah. Um, this one has also got a, what we call roll control so we can shut off each coulter as we come to a headland or if you've got short work. Oh, right, is that individual culture yeah. as well? Right, so we're not talking big sections, we are no, really individual. accurate with this one. So, um, so yeah, and we've got a new calibration system on this because one of the biggest problems setting up section control is mm. timing. Yeah. So now we've got a couple of extra sensors that kind of learn what you're doing on the headland right and then it can help set the section control that's it it's always a bit tricky especially with air seeders and you got yep. the continuous flow of air to get that timing right of when yep. you're in and out yeah um, one of the biggest issues with a drill like this we want to keep to three section folding is keeping it within the eu three meters wide and four meters tall yeah keeping it in that box yeah so that's some of the biggest problems but anyway we've done it with our old one and we've carried that on into the new one yeah. so it ticks all the boxes in that uh, that, that area that's it and this like say this is a nine meter machine yeah. you've had nine meters before haven't you? Yeah, yeah yeah but we've now got um we can have the option of a standard t turbo disc which is this one here then we go to the para disc so this is about 125 kgs of culture pressure the para, para disc, which has got the bar across the top, is more of a parallelogram, oh, right. and that goes up to 150 kgs. Obviously, the turbo disc works really well, but some of our heavier soils in the UK, you just need that extra coulter pressure. Yeah. And uh, the para disc, you know, really gives us. I know it only sounds like 25 kgs, but that's because it's on a parallelogram. It works. It transfers the coulter pressure down a lot better. Right. So you, you transfer it easier. And do you get any more accurate contour following with a parallelogram or linkage at all? Um, is it not similar? really. Right. It's, uh, the problem with a parallelogram sometimes can be if you're in stones. Yeah. Because you hit a stone and it goes, it has to go vertical. Straight up. Yeah. Whereas when you've got a, on an arm, it kind of pivots like this, so it gets yeah. out of the way of stones slightly better. Oh, so it rides up and over a bit yeah. better. But normally stony land is normally lighter soils. Yeah. So the turbo disc works really well there. Yeah, you got a bit of something for everything there. Yeah. And if that won't do it, you've got your time drills as well, of, That's it. of which you've got lots. Yeah. Um, we are now moving on a bit where, for the real precise um, seed placement, we do what we call um, a Paradis Plus or a Turbo Disc Plus. I'm just there is one here somewhere. It's perhaps on the other side. Right. And um, there we, it's a bit like a precision drill. The seed is blown down a pipe and then it's embedded into the soil. All right. And then the soil comes round and consolidates it. Yeah. So if you've got a really perfect seed bed, mm. then you want to get the seed all exactly at the right depth. Yeah. So we're now using that as a uh, an option and you can quickly detach it so if you don't want to do it you can detach it and 
just have the press wheel there and like a normal just culture. go back to standard spec sort yeah. of but we should be able to perhaps have a closer look, have a look at that around there yeah over on the stand there it's a busy old stand as well here you can see the seat comes down and then goes through all right and he's shot out yeah. and embedded into the bottom of the seat furrow right so if chris can squeeze in there it literally just it's just straight down here is it yeah so sort of down there that's it's it blown down there and effectively forced into the furrow yeah yeah so you get a lot better seat placement and then if you need to it's just a couple of bolts and you can take that unit out yeah and that's why we have this catching roller to make sure that the seat is pushed into the bottom so it's it's a bit like a maze drill a precision yeah. drill it's not far off is it so we're we're kind of lower seed rates you want every single seed to germinate talking about efficiency you know this kind of system coupled to you know your individual raw control it'll all yeah. add up won't it yeah 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 and for the you know really good seed bed the high yielding areas yeah then go for lower seed rate and um yeah guaranteed embedding of the seed and away it goes and if it does get wet and this starts getting too complicated you can just unbolt it um, and that, that unit will then lift off and you've just then got a normal press wheel on a either a power this is the power this is the power one right um, so you can really configure this how you like then yeah and there it is with it taken out on yeah. the power disc so just like that so yeah good stuff so that's that's pronto updates now yep. if we if we can squeeze our way through this stand we'll go and have a look at something well it's a bit different for horse isn't it yep yep um we're going over to the uh, forestry trailer. Uh, this was a project. Two of our design engineers who work in R&D, um, two brothers actually started manufacturing this in their sh garden shed, if you want to call it that. <laughs> this is their spare time project. Exactly. Right. Um, so they've designed it. It's got some good features on it. Um, but then they needed to upscale. Yeah. So they went to the horse family and said, how about working together? So we've now branched out into forestry Branched equipment. out, oh. <laughs> so, uh, so this is, uh, the, well, we've got two models at the moment. This is a 20 tonner, hence yeah. the 20, and we do a 16. So we've got a patent um, on the drawbar. Right. So the drawbar can go up and down and side to side. Yeah. So when you're going through the the forests, collecting trees, you know, you you can manoeuvre it very well. Different options of cranes. Yeah. And uh, and obviously we're still learning about what it. This? It's, it's new to me anyway. It's, I've it, never. No, that's it. It's completely different from you know all the stuff that we know horse for, isn't yeah. it? But we will be branching out into a bigger range of forestry equipment. Well, this is just the start, is it? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so uh, the the horse family were quite taken with this idea then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and obviously in Bavaria, where we we're, we're from, you know, yeah. there's a lot of kind of forests and a lot of hobby farmers and, and things like that. So, yeah. So yeah. So we've got different crane options and things like that. You can have two wheel drive, four wheel drive for it with the with obviously two wheel or four wheel drive you need a lot smaller tractor so yeah even though it's 20 ton a four cylinder you know 140 horsepower yeah. tractor and they're just hydraulically driven those axles are they or? yeah 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 so it's all got itself contained you know the good thing is where they've put things you know you can't see the oil tank yeah but it's in that v at the That's front clever, that isn't it they've you literally know. boxed it all in it yeah right there. so yeah it's uh i've already had a couple of people as soon as they saw a press release about it. You're joking. I know. Straight it's, on it. Yeah, so we're going to go to uh, the forestry show. I think it's a AFP, which is at Ragley Hall in September. Yeah. So we're going to launch it into the UK early next year. And um, yeah, see where it goes from there. Definitely. Just like we say, it's just completely different for you yep. guys as well. Yep. You get to go to another show now as oh, well, yeah. Stephen. Fantastic. <laughs> And it's in September. Yeah. So bang in the middle of seeding. Yeah. But uh, there you go. Anyway. Anyway, we move on. So let's back to one of your more regular products, yeah. you might say, just to finish off with. Um, 
what we're heading towards here, Stephen. Yeah, obviously we're moving into the sprayer section, and um, here, you know, obviously we've, we've been selling quite a few sprayers in the UK. Okay. Yeah. Taken off really well. You do all right. So this self-propelled is our smallest one we offer in the UK. So it's so five, this is the Leap Five series, is it? This yeah. One? Well, it's five thousand liters. Right. Two hundred and thirty horsepower engine, and it's more of a fixed axle. Right. But you can get it with a variable track axle from one point eight to two point. 25 or we've now launched in even wider ones like for ctf so you All can right, go yeah. two meters to three meters yeah. or even wider so we can fit different options but uh yeah that's quite popular but the main new product that uh, we think will be quite successful will be the 9000 liter oh so this one behind where uh, behind where chris is if you spins around so onto the the trailed one so yeah. this is 9000 yeah 9000 liter. liters uh, with a poly tank, right. polyethylene tank. And that's the key bit to this? Yeah, we've we've kind of always had a 8,000 litre with stainless steel. Yeah. Um, but some people were wanting a slightly cheaper version than that, so obviously we've gone for that, because obviously there's a certain maximum loading axle you can get. So yeah. this will be about the biggest we can get on a single axle. Right, so this will... Basically, the tank's lighter compared to what you've, you know, this steel. There's not, there's not a lot of difference. Oh, right. Well, with a stainless steel one, you can actually put the strength into the tank. Yeah. With a polyethylene, you have to make a cradle of course, for it to yeah, sit yeah. in. Yeah, so the tank hence, is part of the chassis with a steel one, yeah. effectively. So, with that, you. So, there's not a lot of difference, but poly tank is circa 10,000 cheaper, perhaps. All right. So. It's so, yeah. worth doing then. Well, there's obviously a demand in some markets yeah. and uh, you know it's it's it gives us now four thousand to nine thousand on a single axle and then we've got the twelve thousand oh the big uh, on a tandem axle right and uh, again that's poly tanks we were offering a stainless steel option so that's that's down here is it and we'll have a look at this so, so. so like you were saying you were doing that this was a stainless steel as well wasn't yeah it? yeah but most people have been more than happy with uh, the plastic, so we're just carrying on with plastic now. Right. So uh, this is a fair old thing, isn't it? So yeah. Twelve thousand litre trailer. Yeah, <laughs> we're starting to sell. We've now got five in the UK. Yeah. Or coming. So yeah. um, all sold to there customers. So. Do you think you might uh, apply a bit of forestry tech and have some driven axles on these? Well, keep the job moving on. Maybe you know. You don't with the real big diameter. You know we're. One of the USPs of this is we can go to nearly 2.2 diameter tyres. Right. So the rolling resistance is, is very low. Is very low anyway, right. and uh, we now offer the dynamic steering. So obviously, the the front wheel will follow the back axle of the tractor. Yeah. And then the rear wheel will follow the front wheel of the tractor. So you're right. not you're not running anything down. Yeah. So these um, two axles on this, they're kind of running independently of yeah. each other of and what they need to do. And they're controlled by the gyroscope, so it knows where the tractor is. Right. And then that will steer the axles to follow on the headlands. And um, So there's a, there's a gyroscope on board this sprayer? There's, there'll be two. There'll be two. Because we need one for the boom con active boom yeah. control and then there'll yeah. be another one. True. So it knows in relationship where it is to it the It knows where it's pointing, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then obviously with that, with certain customers buying these, they wanted a pneumatic spreader. Well, the pneumatic spreader we showed um, as a prototype at the last So fabric. that's in this corner. Chris, there's more. <laughs> Come down here. <laughs> so this is based on the similar chassis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. basically for the aimed at the same customers. Yeah, so and big. Pneumatic, uh, for, you know, granular fertilizer yeah. applicator. So this was a prototype two years ago at Agritechnica. Yeah. Now it's in production. So, um, so yeah, this is available. So what? Basically, we've got a fairly um, unique system with this. In uh, with the biggest problem with pneumatic um, spreaders in the past has been lots of different hoses and bends, mm. and it used to wear corners and things like that. Now, the only corner is that metal piece where it goes down to the deflector plate. All oh, right, so going from the pipe 
So, yeah. so what we've got is there's a, a, an auger along the bottom yeah. and then an auger goes up and the metering unit box is around the corner here. <laughs> That's down here. So if we squeeze down here. So. All oh, right, you've got it on display over here. So, so this is the, the metering unit. So that sits on the back and it's yeah. on way cells. So the, the first being augered up to this metering unit, yep. right? And then we've got 12 sections, so 12 little augers which are on the wall there. Yeah. Um, that will then auger it out to each section on the spray. So they're just, oh, I see, they're just sat in the bottom there. Yep. Controlled down here. Yep. Like I say, that's just being augered out to each yeah. of the sections. So all we do is auger it from, so the, this is just a big hopper really. Yeah and then it's all good into this the... This is the complicated bit. Yeah. Right, this is where all your section control happens That's it. effectively. That's it, and like I said, it's got way cells, yeah. and then you... you know, so it's a big curb. metering unit as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Effectively, yeah, on the way cells. But before, they all they used to hang underneath. Right. So then you had to big fan, blow it up, and then yeah, down yeah. to each side and things so like that. So this is a lot simpler and more accurate. Yeah. Yeah. There it's got go. curve compensation and everything like that. So, oh, right. so like on the outer boom, you can get that one sped up a bit, and yep. you know, in terms of its application rate. That's it. Yeah. And again, so. I suppose, like we were talking about with the Pronto before, trying to get the your ins and outs and your timings right, that would be a bit of a challenge on this as well. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's no different to a sprayer, really. Yeah. That's a little bit easier. Yeah. And I suppose uh, fundamentally, a fair application system such as this is going to be way more accurate than you know a pair of spinning discs yeah and you're not so much weather dependent you know you can go out when it's a little bit windier yeah things like and also use cheaper quality fertilizer right so that will perhaps come in but as we always do we always start big so <laughs> <coughs> we have one of these coming to the uk a 48 meter one because this is available as 36 39 and 48 right so we've got a 48 coming to go with a 48 yeah 12 TD. It's a family of big products. Yeah, it? but we're hoping they'll go to a single axle, say eight ton, because I yeah. think that'll be more of a. That's it, max some of your other yeah, you know, single exactly. axle trail spare products. Which yeah. is what is more popular for us. Yeah. But so you, you go to Europe and they're still putting on over 200 litres a hectare of chemical, so we're 100. Yeah. So really, their 12 TD is only a 6,000 litre, which is our popular sprayer. Yeah just because of the water con uh, quantity that they're applying with there. And uh, hence they want the capacity to marry with fertilizer as well. So. There you go. So yeah. Great stuff. Well, Stephen, thank yep. you very much for your time. It's been uh, absolutely spot on. It's just going from the bread and butter stuff and the updates to something completely new in the middle with the, uh, the uh, log forwarding trailer. Yeah. And then, yeah, moving the job on again with the sprayer stuff and the fertiliser application, yep. just, yeah. And we've got a lot more other, you know, changes to products and things like that. Yeah. But, you know, those are the main ones yeah. that are perhaps the, the big news. As ever, come and see you at a show. And That's see what's, it. See what's happening, That's see what's it. being updated. Because I suppose with a product range like yours, it's not always about... You can't come always reinvent the wheel over and over again. It's no, lots no. of subtle little updates all the time. Yeah, isn't it? trying to make them better quality, level fields when you're cultivating all about precision now, yeah really that's it good stuff well once again Stephen thank you very much for your time Thanks a lot. <laughs>